Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to implement some hardware effects into Reaper. And what I have here is the TC Electronic G Sharp. It's an old thing. I think it's from like 2000 something, 2006 maybe. It's uh, not super complicated, not super high end or anything like that. It has uh, MIDI in and out, has true stereo input and outputs, a SPDIF connection. And today we'll look at different ways we can connect this to Reaper and what we can do with it. So the example sound I have today is just this like a 808 uh, beat. And we're gonna send that out of my audio interface into the G sharp, put some uh, delay on it, some reverb, and bring it back through an audio input and back into the track in Reaper. So my connections are output, six on my audio interface goes to the G sharp input. I'm only doing the left channel input, uh, which automatically duplicates it to the right channel. Then it's coming out stereo. So I have left and right outputs going out of there into inputs five and six of my audio interface. To do this, you need more than two inputs and outputs. You need to be able to send discrete signals to different outputs. So my main mix is whatever I hear in Reaper, and my output five and six, in this case, is uh, my G sharp send and return. And because these are delays and reverbs, I'm going to put them on a separate track, separate from the actual source sounds. And so I've got this track called Effect here, and I'm going to make a send just by dragging and dropping. And I've got this at minus six post fader. That's all good. Don't need to do anything else there. We'll add a plugin called reinsert, and that'll be in the Kakos folder. And this is like a virtual patch bay. So we can take our hardware sends, whatever's on the track, or whatever's coming into this track is then going to be sent out of one of my audio interface outputs. And because we only want the uh, mono signal being sent, I'm going to output six, and on the right side, nothing. We can also send MIDI out of here, and I'll show you that later. Hardware returns will go to input analog five and input analog six. Now we see this option here, automatic device latency adjustment, reported latency 1240. That's just because my audio interface is set at, uh, at 512. So that's the, uh, amount of latency that's reported that may not be exact. So we also have this option of additional delay compensation and ping detect. Now ping detect will send a signal out, wait for its response, and then calculate that time delay and get uh, perfectly in sync audio. Now this isn't exactly a set and forget option here. We'll need to detect again if we change our sample rate, if we change the buffer size, um, maybe some other things, but those are the two main ones where your external audio comes out of sync. So if you can see here on my rack mount unit, I've got the bypass button pushed in, and that means that only the dry signal will pass through. Whatever's at the input will pass through to the output with no additional processing. There's just that delay inherent with going out of digital to analog converter through cables into an analog to digital converter out of another digital to analog converter and back into an analog to digital converter. So there's that delay that we need to compensate for. I'm going to press ping detect. And we didn't hear anything there, but it did send in a signal, detect it at the output. It's going to add in another 68 samples. All right, and if we play this back, play back that drum loop, we should hear it. We should see some uh, input on that G sharps meter. Now I'm hearing both of these signals. I'm hearing both the drum loop direct to Reaper's master. I'm also hearing the output of reinsert. There's no phasing, sounds perfectly in sync. So let's switch off bypass and get some effects on this. I've got a ping pong delay and a reverb.
Okay, so we have audio input and output, and we've got it in sync, and it's working perfectly. Let's look at some other things we can do with this. If we just connect a MIDI cable from the output of our interface to the MIDI input of the rack mount unit, and pretty much anything since 1985 is going to have a MIDI input for syncing the effects. With that, we can send the MIDI clock, uh, which is going to sync those delays to the project. Now, we'll just uh, quickly look in preferences, and we're looking at the MIDI devices page, and here's my audio interface, MIDI ports, double-click this, and if you have send clock to this device, that's going to automatically send your tempo changes to your external effects. We don't even need to send MIDI out of reinsert at this point. Uh, every time you start and stop Reaper, it's going to be sending that tempo change information. All right, so let's put in a tempo change here. It's currently at 90. I'm going to put this at 120. And I do need to make sure that the delay timing knob is uh, up at normal on this device. Let's just hear this with a click. And I think you should see that LED is lit up uh, whenever that click is going. All right, and we'll hit play. Let's change this even slower. So let's go to 80, press play. It should automatically make that light flash at a slower pace. We're getting quarter notes, uh, quarter note delay on this. So that's pretty easy. What we can also do with this is control parameters. Now, this is where things get tricky because you need to look in the manual and see which MIDI parameters it will receive. We also need a plugin in Reaper to actually send that CC, or the continuous controller change. So in Reaper, that's the recontrol MIDI plugin. And there's a bit of a shortcut to insert that as the first slot. We right click, uh, go down to MIDI track controls and show MIDI track control panel. And that's just put recontrol MIDI in the first slot of the effects chain. Go down to control change and raw mode. Need to look in the manual for the continuous controller messages that it will receive. What we're looking for here is effects type, that's CC50. Let's scroll down here to 50. And timing 16. And the reason we put it on raw mode is that uh, it's the only way that they're numbered in this list. So unfortunately, that's reset it. So uh, 50, 16. The next one is feedback, and that's on 17. So we've got our delay type, the delay timing, and the delay feedback. Next, we've got the reverb, which is CC51. And the last one is, we'll do decay. So that's our decay time on CC19. Now these numbers, they're going to be different for every single device. Like uh, my MIDI verb 3 has a different set of parameters that it res uh, responds to. But this is a way that we can actually automate the controls from the computer. Let's just start them all at zero. And before we get this to work, we need to send MIDI out of the MIDI port. Uh, just check your hardware MIDI port here that's connected to the rack mount effect and it'll work. Now we're using this plugin to send control changes to the hardware.
so now that we have these in the re control MIDI plugin, we can add these for automation with the uh, last touched show track envelope, or we can go to effects parameter list. We can show the track envelopes here, CC 50, 16, 17, 51, 19. It's going to be different on your devices, uh, but we can add these five parameters to the track or we can show their, their automation lane. Uh, show in track controls. Uh, so let's just add in number 19. And now on my track, I have this little knob here for controlling. What was that? That was the decay time of the reverb. If we need more than five parameters for automation, we can add in a second recontrol MIDI, choose another five parameters, or we could build our own JS effect plugin that would give us as many controls as we need, name them and all that kind of stuff. If we're using this kind of thing a lot, we can save this all as a effects chain or a track template. And if we want to rename this so it's not CC19, but it's uh, decay time, we can just click on alias. And here we just type in verb decay, something like that. And now it'll show up in our track control panel uh, with our new name. The only other thing I wanted to cover in this video was digital connections. A lot of audio interfaces and a lot of rack mount effects have SPDIF connections. That's a two-channel digital connection that uses an RCA connector on a special shielded cable. So you can't use any like stereo, hi-fi, um, RCA connectors. You should use this proper SPDIF digital cable. Uh, but with that, you can send stereo audio. Uh, so it would be one cable going from your interface output to the rack mount uh, device input, and then another cable going from the output back to the interface input. And so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.